so I tried to pick two similar videos um, as far as the angle and then both slow motion just so we can really see the precise timing of it. Now, I want to I want to say like um, it's not one of those drastic differences in timing, right? You're going to notice that it's going to be very minute, very simplistic. Um, so we're going to screen this. This is just going to be the difference of when the hip uh, initiates its rotation in comparison to someone that hip hinge loads the drive leg and then someone who quad dominant loads the drive leg. Um, and like I said, Garrett Cole on the left, Charlie Morton on the right. Um, I'll do another video screening of those who ankle evert, call like ankle eversion in comparison to those who just rotate their back foot. So um, try to do two separate videos just to give you guys as much context as possible in regards to um, hopefully equipping you to self-screen athletes or self-screen yourself, but self-screen yourself. Wow. That's a lot of selves. But again, just looking here, um, I wish the videos were more zoomed up on the, the Charlie Morton one, uh, like the Garrett Cole, but you know, Hey, we, we work with what we get. So again, very subtle difference. All right. Garrett Cole, he's going to be someone like, I love watching him throw. Um, because you just can't quite figure it out. He does so many things well, but he doesn't do anything in particular with his delivery um, besides his linear direction that really jumps out. Okay, so here we have, let's get him at peak leg lift now. Again, remember descending from peak leg lift. This is the, the drive leg mechanics and the responsibility of the drive leg mechanics. And now, boom, you can see that just not to get too far into the drive leg mechanics of both of these guys, but you can see that they're in a, uh, position in which they are now loading up the drive leg and now entering the drive phase, they are going to be storing that energy in the drive leg. Now, um, just to give you some brief context that we touched, touched on earlier in the, the previous chapter, Morton, due to his quad dominant load, this angle isn't going to really showcase the quad dominant load like a right in front or a broadcast view from behind. But nonetheless, his knee is going to collapse over the foot. He's going to load in his quad. His direction is going to actually go that way. Whereas Cole, he's going to pretty much stay in a vertical shin, and his direction is going to go linear. Um, you can also see the difference in, in the glove side between the two, how that influences their direction as well. But as we touched on in the previous chapter, those who load in the drive leg via a quad dominant, they're going to have to initiate their rotation earlier than so, uh, like a Garrett Cole. So just to give you this visual, all right, so now not to point out all of the particular differences, although they are both throwing a curveball, so how about that? So, all right, so now they're in their drive phase, okay? So they're both doing a good job of storing energy. You can see that Cole continuously sinks his hips. Same with Morton. Now, they're pretty much, um, aside from the differences of the glove side and aside from the differences of the direction, they're pretty much in a very similar posture here, okay? So now we're gonna notice as we go ahead in frames, and now remember for those of you guys who are gonna be screening athletes, this is a, a slow motion video. So the frames, you know, if we counted like the frames, now th those, are gonna, those are gonna differentiate. Maybe I'll do some more context on how you can look for that. But I just want you to notice that when his knee is gonna start to cave in, that's gonna be when I dictate when that rear hip is starting internal rotation. And you can also look, um, this is why I wanted to do a separate screening for like ankle eversion and foot rotation, because you can also look at when the heel disconnects, because more oftentimes times the heel disconnects when the hip internally rotates. Okay. So what you're going to see here in the difference is as soon as Morton's heel disconnects right here. Okay. You can see that Cole is still locked in. Now these frames or both of these videos are synced up at ball release. So you can see that he is already initiating his hips into rotation, whereas Garrett Cole, he's going to be able to stay grounded for a longer duration of time due to his linear direction. So he's going to keep pelvis neutral, keep the hips neutral. You can see that he's doing a good job with his front foot uh, in comparison to Morton. Um, and again, these aren't one of those things where it's like bad or good. Okay, it's just highlighting the differences in which, you know, kind of equipping each athlete into how they move. So now you can really see it with Morton on the right. You know, the, the heel is definitely being disconnected. Hips are definitely going into rotation and Cole is still grounded. Okay. Now we're going to really see it here. Boom. Now the difference is approaching front foot strike. All right. So if you want to just count the frames, 
that's the subtle difference in the initiation of hip rotation between the two. Okay, so now we both have them at full anchor point of that front foot. And you can see that they, although they both create a ton of se uh, separation through segmentation, um, we won't even dive into Morton's glove side scap retraction. That's a whole nother chapter that we'll have to talk about, but you can see the differences in the drive foot. Okay, so now, although both of them, I would say Morton's a little bit more into rotation than Cole is, but both are creating optimal amounts of separation. Now let's just go back very subtly and just notice the differences in when the hips initiate their rotation. All right, so Morton's right there. Okay, so he's initiating his right here into rotation. Cole is still neutral. Now one, two, three, boom. Now Cole is going to start initiating his rotation here. Okay, so again, just to equip you guys with as much context as possible, like that's what everyone's gonna wanna know is when do the hips initiate rotation? And, and although I wish there was just a set answer of Y equals MC squared, it always does, in my opinion, depend on the type of mover and the type of which you load the drive leg. Because me personally, I've dealt with this throughout my career because I'm very quad dominant in the way that I load drive leg. And I know that I've had to make personal modifications in regards to the uh, opening of my hips. So you can see even here with Morton, this front foot is going to have to open up and that's going to be a direct correlation to when this heel disconnects, right? Whereas Cole, who's able to stay grounded and continuously put pressure into the ground, his front foot is gonna be um, complementing that in regards to keeping his pelvis neutral. And um, as you can see how that changes, whereas Morton's foot opens up fully there, disconnection, and boom, okay? Like I said, I spent eight minutes, probably more, talking about something that could have been shown in 60 seconds, but I just wanted to give you guys some context in regards to this, this, this dynamic here. Um, because again, the, the timing is always going to vary. We just want to make sure that the timing is precise to each individual, meaning they're not sacrificing any type of stability of the drive leg to storing energy, okay? And making sure making for certain that they're not compromising when their trunk initiates rotation. Because again, I need to do a whole different chapter in regards to segmentation creates authentic separation, right? Obviously that, that correlates to hip rotation mechanics. Um, and then later down in the ebook, we'll be talking about trunk rotation mechanics and how these two complement each other. Because again, just to echo the same thoughts in the drive leg mechanics, the biggest thing that we want to make sure that we're not doing in regards to how we load our drive leg is sacrificing our separation. 80% of velocity comes from the ability to segment the lower body and the upper body. Now, these views aren't good for looking at segmentation and, and separation. Um, as you can see, it looks like Morton is not segmented, seg segmented? segmented all that much due to the angle. Um, so that's the biggest piece that uh, I wanted to talk about in regards to the timing of uh, when hip, hips rotate. And then, like I said, I wanna do another screening for those of you guys listening and watching this from the ebook, do another screening because there's a whole nother uh, kind of emphasis on individuals that can evert their ankle, meaning their heel's gonna stay grounded for a longer duration of time. Um, and comparison to guys that, uh, that just rotate their foot. So if you're watching this from the ebook, we'll keep it going. If you're not watching this from the ebook and you're just watching this screening on YouTube, be sure to check out the ebook that is currently in the works, therobbyroshow.com slash ebooks for when that's available. And until next time, your boy's out. Love you guys. God bless. See you.